Good evening and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut, a double shot of content coming at you today. If some of you are curious as to why I'm sending you so many episodes in one day, as I've been doing off and on for a while now, well, to give you a quick rundown on how things have been going, and by the way, if you're not interested in hearing about this, please skip to here, but uh, I checked out the analytics of how things have been going on my channel, and things have been going very well as far as viewership is concerned. In January, I actually had 15% more views than I had in October, an increase of 90,000 views. And by the way, that is what we content creators get paid on, is the number of times that you guys click on, uh, on our videos. That being said, however, the money for January went down 15% from where it was in October. So I get 15% more activity and 15% less money. That just gives you an indication of how things are going with us content creators these days. And thank you so much for your support because without it, frankly, I would have to knuckle down and not really do any on location coverage at all. It just wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much for making all of that happen. And also, if you have not not subscribed yet, please subscribe because I've grown by another 300 subscribers in the space of less than 48 hours. Very impressive and very close to that 100k. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on. <laughs> So uh, some news has broken recently. Once again, this is not 100% confirmed, but it seems very likely that it appears that ULA is now for sale. And as some of you probably have noticed from the thumbnail, that's something that I regard as being very bad for the space industry and for us. Uh, launch providers in general. And here's the reason why in a nutshell. ULA is the number two launch provider in the world, really, um, certainly in the United States, but pretty much in the world as well, um, aside perhaps from the People's Republic of China. And as a result, they're also a company that has been doing a lot to try to innovate in order to be able to compete with SpaceX. What this means is if this company does indeed get sold, they're going to have a couple of possibilities and both of them are lousy ones. Either they're going to end up getting sold to the old guard, some of the old boys network of companies that haven't been very good at innovating and instead rely on their connections in Congress, lobbyists, etc. in order to get them business, or they're going to end up getting sold to somebody that's going to result in creating a gigantic monopoly. Neither of these things are good for spaceflight. And frankly, anytime a company gets sold, generally that's not good for the employees of the company that's getting sold. And that especially applies to Tori Bruno, who in my opinion is one of the most intelligent and talented people in spaceflight today. So let's get the easy potential buyer out of the way first. There is no way in hell that the U.S. government is going to allow SpaceX to purchase ULA, no matter how much it might benefit SpaceX to do so, because that would then make Elon Musk the master of the number one and number two launch provider in the country, and also a man who would dominate all of the military contracts coming out of the U.S. Space Force or just about anybody else in the future. He would also dominate virtually all of the NASA contracts. That is something that the U.S. government would never permit. Well, let me take that back for a moment. I have no idea what the U.S. government is going to permit these days, considering what they've been doing lately, but even the thought of that kind of monopoly would have presidents like Teddy Roosevelt doing cartwheels in their graves. This country has a history of stopping massive monopolies from forming that goes back over a hundred years. However, they haven't been able to stop every monopoly. For example, look at companies like Verizon, but nevertheless, in general, the United States is not well disposed towards massive monopolies that SpaceX and ULA together would represent. Plus, what does ULA really have to offer SpaceX in the first place, aside 
aside from the opportunity of getting rid of their only major competitor. That having been said, though, the other alternatives are not all that fantastic either. For example, Boeing and Lockheed Martin, the two companies who are responsible for SLS, well, really, what do I have to say as far as that's concerned? These are the companies that formed ULA in the first place, but ever since then, ULA has done a great deal to try to be a lot more innovative and competitive than their parent companies. And this has been manifested very well in the Vulcan Centaur rocket. It's going to include things like smart reusability, an advanced upper stage that's going to be able to function as a reusable space tug and other purposes, a rocket that's going to be able to go head-to-head -head with rockets like Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy for a long time in the future. And neither Lockheed Martin nor Boeing have demonstrated an ability or a willingness to engage in this kind of innovation in the work that they've been doing. Granted, Orion is a reusable spacecraft and performed extremely well, but given the fact that it's going to take two years in order to be able to reuse the Orion that just made a journey around the moon in the first place, that's not very good reusability. And frankly, also, Tori Bruno will probably lose his job given the fact that he operates for the company that's being bought out and not the purchasing company, which means that all of his talented leadership will probably be lost and things will likely revert to the way that Boeing and Lockheed Martin has been doing business for a long time anyway. Not a great alternative. And that also applies to other old boy companies like Northrop Grumman, for example, who also might be interested in this kind of purchase. Really, any companies that have shown an inability to innovate and compete with SpaceX are not great candidates to purchase ULA. Indeed, given that Northrop Grumman hasn't really demonstrated a willingness to innovate beyond the Antares rocket and the Cygnus resupply ship, both of which are wasteful and expensive, I really don't see that being a great partnership either, one that would work against ULA and U.S. spaceflight in general. But what about the last partnership? What about Blue Origin? Well, if things were done right, and in my opinion, they probably wouldn't be done right, this is probably the best alternative that ULA has at their disposal. Already, Blue Origin and ULA have been working together extensively on the BE-4 engine. And given that Blue Origin desperately wants to sit at the big boy stable, especially when it comes to military contracts, and given that Blue Origin is unlikely to reach orbit anytime this year or indeed even next year, this would be the best way for Blue Origin to become a real competitor, using a portion at least of their technology in order to reach orbit for a change and to be able to compete head-to-head -head with SpaceX on their own terms. Now, granted, they would probably be unlikely to compete against SpaceX, at least in the near future, with the LEO market, but as far as geosynchronous launches are concerned, Vulcan Centaur will be extremely competitive. And of course, also, ULA has secured 60% of the U.S. Space Force's launches for the next several years anyway, so this would be a very good bet in general. And on top of that, once New Glenn finally does get into service, its ability to carry large amounts of payload to low Earth orbit will also allow this new merger to compete very effectively against SpaceX in both markets, both in terms of low Earth orbit and also geosynchronous orbits and beyond. This partnership could potentially be extremely powerful if, and only if, Tory Bruno keeps his job because in my opinion the slow but steady or whatever they say step by step ferociously whatever their approach has been over at Blue Origin is not the way you compete against SpaceX indeed if ULA is even going to be able to keep up with their current contract obligations they're going to have to launch a rocket every two damn weeks you can't do that step by step ferociously
ferociously. You have to do it with a little bit more of a sense of urgency, and Tori Bruno is capable of maintaining that sense of urgency. Now, Amazon would be another potential buying partner, but when it comes right down to it, both of these companies are owned by Jeff Bezos, and ULA being bought by either of them amounts to the same thing. So here's the bottom line. The only scenario in which I see this being a good thing is if Blue Origin or Amazon ends up being the buying agent and they don't change anything at ULA. They just use ULA's current capabilities and ability to innovate to compete with SpaceX right away instead of having to wait for New Glenn. Any other scenario is a losing scenario for ULA and spaceflight in general. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, also hit those notification bell buttons, and also please check out the description for various ways to support my content. And as always, stay angry about space!